Sometimes a boy is born. Sometimes a man. Sometimes a man is born through the ashes. And mankind. And mankind gets a touch of the glory. It's destiny. We get to stare in awe. We just get to stare in awe and watch our television sets. Do we deserve you? Do you sin? Would you die for us? Maybe we should just let it take its course, for better or for worse. This is Michael Wolfgram. He's just a little wrestler with big dreams and an even bigger heart. Uh, my name is Michael Wolfgram. I've been wrestling for six years and I wrestled for Central York High School. I became dedicated very late. Uh, I didn't start taking this seriously till about eighth grade. That's when I really started to see how much I had to work if I wanted to be good. So that's when I started to take it real seriously. My freshman year, uh, I was happy with the way it went. Uh, it was cool to come in and, you know, do some of the stuff that I did and I didn't expect to be as good as I was but as the season went on and I started you know beat more and more people I just wanted to work harder and harder to you know be the best that I could and that's what I always strive to be. Michael made it to PA States as a freshman. He is just one of the few Central York High School wrestlers to ever accomplish this. It was a really cool experience to, you know, go there and uh, see the atmosphere and uh, all the people and to meet some pretty cool wrestlers and cool people in general. Uh, it wasn't as fun as the way it ended, though. Uh, I didn't place. But, you know, it's just, it's cool to get there and, you know, get those feelings, you know, under your belt so that way when you come back and you're a little older and more experienced, it's, uh, you know, you can take home a medal, hopefully. Mike didn't let this loss get him down. He came back the next year even hungrier. I came into the room a lot. I went to the gym a lot and I did stuff like, uh, you know, read leadership books and, you know, focus on stuff like that. And I helped improve my mental game. I did workouts that were insanely hard, you know, to just improve my mental and my physical game because any great athlete will tell you, you know, you can be the strongest and the fastest, but you know, if you're there mentally and you know you're the best and you think you're the best, you'll perform like the best. My name's Seth Bites, and I've been coaching at Central for three years. I began coaching Michael uh, the summer before his freshman year in high school. I honestly thought uh, Michael had something uh, the first time we rolled around on the mat. I could just tell uh, the way he moved and that he had a real natural feel for it. Uh, I knew that he, didn't, he hadn't been wrestling very long or he didn't have a whole lot of experience. Uh, but I knew that you know, he had a real knack for it and that he was very comfortable in those uh, situations. Seth has been a huge inspiration for Michael. When Seth was a kid, he was able to compete against some of the finest double A wrestlers out there.
Nice try, coach. Nice try. My name is Joe Musty. I'm the assistant head coach at Central York Wrestling. When Seth came to us, he was a big, big, bad Penn State wrestler. Mr. Ooh, I went to Penn State, I got a Penn State bag, Penn State hat, Penn State shirt. He's been a major influence on not only my career, but my life as a whole. But I mean, boy, could this guy wrestle. Uh, he would throw Mike around uh, something awful. Uh, now they wrestle, Seth can't score a point. It is literally um, every day he leaves here, he's got a bloody lip or a bloody eye or a bloody ear. And uh, he handles it really well. You know, when I came up, he really started to work with me and uh, he, he didn't single me out, but you know, you know, whenever I needed him, he'd always be over there. And uh, you know, when the weekends come and he's like, would you like to go in for a practice? And I'm like, yeah, he's, would you like to read this book? And I'm like, yeah, he just, he really tries to improve me overall. And he gets, you know, big pictures like, you know, grades and, and what I'm going to do after wrestling. And he, and he tries to help me with stuff like that. Um, for being such a young guy at 25 years old, you'd think he'd still have something more in the basement. Um, but Mike took that all out. I mean, he's got nothing left. So, um, it, it is hard to watch sometimes, I'll be honest. Last season, Mike and Coach Seth made a bet that soon became legend. If Seth lost the bet, he would have to compete in a tournament against college wrestlers. My bet with our head coach was that I had to acquire 20 pins in the regular season, and I only had 25 matches to do it in. Well, 21 if you want to count forfeits because we didn't. And honestly, we made that bet the beginning of the summer, and I thought there's no way that I was getting this. And I was trying to get him to, to lower it and lower it and lower it, and he was like, nope, 20's it. When I lost the bet with Michael, uh, it was a lot of mixed emotions. Uh, at one point, you know, on one side, I'm extremely happy to see uh, him develop and grow and change so much in a year. I uh, went from pinning next to no one his freshman year to, <laughs> to pinning, you know, everybody his sophomore year. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it takes a lot, of, a lot of work and a lot of dedication to have that kind of uh, growth. So in that sense, I was super happy. Uh, and then on the other side, whenever I realized, you know, I had to get back out on the mat and, and go out there and compete against college guys, I was uh, a little bit uh, depressed and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, it was, it was fun. Winning the bet was really cool because it came down to the Southwestern head coach and his decision because they had two 220s and no heavyweight and it was whether or not they were going to you know, send him out and as soon as they sent him out I was like, I'm winning this bet. And you know, I got the pin uh, late in the first, and I looked over at him and smiled, and he just hung his head, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I never felt that I had to come in here, but I always wanted to. But you know, it, it goes to an extent because you know, you wanna hang with the best guys, and you wanna be there, and if you wanna get you know, invited out to you know, college visits where you wanna go and hang with kids that are you know, ranked as high as number one in the country, then you're gonna have to you know improve and it doesn't matter you know if there's pressure or not you still have to you know train he's super competitive he loves to win uh and and he he you know he trains hard he wants it uh and then you know just being as quick as he is and as strong as he is I mean, those things kind of help him win you know just getting in the room uh improving my technique i learn something new or fix something every time I come in this room. I've been working with Mike for uh, since he was in eighth grade, making him stronger and faster and more aggressive and more skilled. Mike and I first wrestled when he was in eighth grade and I think I was 37 and uh, it wasn't even close. I mean, when he was an eighth grader, I could snap him down face plant him right into the mat, score, 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 and uh, he couldn't do anything to stop me. Uh, but over the last three seasons, uh, he has become an animal. 
I, I climb on his back when he does hills. Um, sometimes I put him on my back when I do sprints. We have battle ropes. Um, Mike has gotten really good and fast and explosive with them. When he's doing those ropes, uh, everybody in the room can feel it. They can hear it. Uh, gives you a little bit of a sensation to know that there's somebody that powerful on the team. Um, if he doesn't do well, I'll wrap that rope right around him. Tie him right up, roll him into the corner, and I'll make him say his ABCs until he can't. Um, and everybody, everybody watches, and it's awful for him. And that's one of the reasons why he's a state qualifier, two-time state qualifier. Um, but typically he does well with the battle ropes. I haven't had to, haven't had to wrap him up in a while. Another thing that we do here in the wrestling team is we lift a lot of weights. Um, but in the room, we don't have weights per se. We just have people, other wrestlers. So a lot of times I'll say, Mike, get on your back. And then he'll have to bench press one of the lighter guys, you know, um, like, it, like he's a dumbbell. And then sometimes I'll make him lift him up with a lot of force so that the body of the lighter weight kid spins and then Mike has to catch him and bring him back down into a bear hug and then, uh, and then start over with a heavier kid. I hope that Mike sets big goals for himself. I hope that you know he sets a goal so far out there that uh, when he tells somebody about it, a family member, a friend, they're just they're blown away by how big his stretch goal is that they, you know, they're like, wow, that's, that's pretty far out there. Uh, I, I truly believe that Mike is extremely talented and that he has the ability to go out and achieve uh, a goal like that. Uh, and I just, you know, hope to be, you know, just a piece in that puzzle just to help him, you know, get a, get a step further or get a step closer to that stretch goal uh, in the course of his career. Things that I love about wrestling, it's just you, you have to go out there, it's you and another person on a mat. and you're gonna see who gives up first. That's pretty much what it is. And I like knowing that I'm mentally stronger than everyone I step on the mat against. And that's the way I think and that's the way I act when I'm out there. The goals for my wrestling career are to be a state champ, to go on to a successful program, I'm not worried about the division, and be a national champ. Yeah, and a fight to the death is obviously Orion. Uh, I think he's got more of that killer instinct. Uh, but if it was just, you know, tag, I don't know. I, I'd say probably Mike would win in tag. Uh, but, yeah, it'd be interesting to watch, I guess.